very lucky today to have Aisley Lester bring us up to date. Aisley is the senior project manager at the Columbus Downtown Development Corporation in Capital South. That's a private nonprofit organization designed to, to lead city changing, pro, city changing projects in the heart of the capital city, including such things as the Lazarus Building, creation of the Scioto Mile, Scioto Greenways, and the development of Columbus Commons. She's been with the organization since 2012 and cur currently focuses on the outreach and promotion of the new National Veterans Memorial and Museum. Previously, she worked for the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission. She's a graduate of The Ohio State University with a degree in public master's in public administration from the John Glenn School of Public Affairs and also has a communications degree. So, Ashley, welcome. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's a true honor to be here, and I will say to all the veterans in the audience, sincerely, thank you for your service. This project is extremely humbling, as you can imagine. I've had the pleasure to work on it for the past couple years, and, and we're nearing the home stretch for completion. It should open next summer. Um, I'm going to walk through a little bit of the background of the project and bring you up to speed with some renderings of the exhibits and show you some aerial construction photos. I know most of you have driven by, but it's nice to see it from that bird's eye view. Here's a little bit of a lay of the land for you, um, kind of in the backyard here. Um, if you've read the paper recently, uh, the area we're talking about is the Scioto Peninsula neighborhood. It's kind of this last untapped piece of land uh, in parcels in downtown Columbus. The Columbus Downtown Development Corporation is uh, really leading up the charge to bring this new 21-acre mixed-use development to life. So soon you'll see even more announcements of what this will become, but I must say it's so exciting. It's going to be a new um, hotels and residential commercial space, um, a new cultural district, if you will. So the National Veterans Memorial Museum is really one piece of that really big puzzle. And you know, a lot of things we've learned from our other developments is that you, know, you can't do things in a vacuum. And so with the new American Museum, Museum of Natural History Dinosaur Gallery opening this month and more announcements to come. This museum will really live with the footfall of a lot of these other institutions that are, are coming our way. Um, these four pillars are what were uh, founded upon by our Veterans Advisory Committee. It was led by the late Senator John Glenn, uh, which I had the honor of, of working with. And um, I think one thing that was very passionate uh, to Mr. Glenn was this idea of, of service. And um, while he was realistic, which I appreciated that less than 1% of our population is serving today, how can we inspire youth to continue service just as you are, are sitting here today? Um, continue service within their own communities. And I, I found that to be pretty remarkable. How can we get folks to walk in this museum and kind of question, how can I give back? And so that's one element you're going to see throughout these exhibits. This is a rendering from Broad Street. Um, it's coming along. It's starting to look like that. The architects uh, are Allied Works Architecture, and, and they really heard from the Veterans Advisory Committee that they, they want something to look like the inside, meaning the moment you set eyes on this, they want folks to understand that there's something really important inside. And so I think that's what's coming to life on Broad Street. It's really exciting. Here's a site plan of that um, area. It's about seven acres. And if you recall, I'm sure most of you do, this was the old Franklin County Veterans Memorial site. And back in 2012, the City of Columbus and the Franklin County Board of Commissioners tasked our organization, the Columbus Downtown Development Corporation, with taking a really hard look at that existing facility. And the question was asked, how can we truly honor veterans and educate folks about the sacrifices that they and their families have made? That's a profound question. And so we convened a Veterans Advisory Committee, and they got to work. And they ultimately came back with a re recommendation to build a brand new facility. Um, and take that question to heart. And so that's what we set off to do. Uh, we were really under the auspice of the mission to create a statewide museum. We were excited about that. That was our task. We started interviewing hundreds of veterans um, through dozens of focus groups. And one thing just kept popping up that we quite frankly couldn't ignore. And that was the veterans were saying to us, sure, I'll check your box. You know, I was born here when I served, or um, when I served, I lived here in Ohio. But I'm a veteran of the United States of America. Those are my comrades. So sure, I'll, I'll be a part of your statewide museum. But we kept hearing this, and we kept 
saying, are we missing a bigger picture to tell? So we went back to our, our founding patrons, our sponsors at the time, and said, I think we have a much richer fabric to explore here. And by the very nature of us trying to be inclusive, we were excluding this huge story. And so we switched, we, we took a turn. So back in the fall of last year, we changed our scope to a national Veterans Memorial Museum, and um, the, the existing bones of the architecture had, didn't have to change much. We just kind of switched gears and started a national story. Um, and so that's where we're at now, is, is this national museum right in downtown Columbus. Couldn't be more excited about it, and I hope you'll leave with a little bit of that emotion too. You'll see from this site plan where we're at, um, I'm not sure where the pointer is, I don't want to blind anybody. Um, Broad Street is here at the bottom of the image, and the main entrance is actually off of Broad Street. So if you've passed it and kind of wondered, you've seen kind of the concrete being poured or the steps, that's where you'll actually enter. Behind it is a, a memorial grove. It's about two and a half acres on that seven acre site. Um, and I'll kind of walk you through the inside of the museum. It's probably really hard to see from where you're at, but at least you can see the, the dynamic nature of the three rings. Um, when I give tours inside, I kind of feel like a mouse chasing cheese sometimes because it's, it's, it's a constant kind of turn. The architecture is really interesting, and um, it's a lot of concrete walls and, and very interesting materiality as you walk through. So you'll kind of take this curved journey through the whole museum. Um, it's hard to see in this picture, but I'll show you in a rendering a rooftop processional. So there's actually a um, graded walkway up to get to the exterior of the rooftop, which is really nice. So you start your museum experience here. This is the Great Hall. Um, as I mentioned, you walk in from Broad Street, and you see these banners in this rendering, and that idea is to remind us that veterans are all around us. So these are real people. Uh, they'll be hanging uh, from the ceiling. One side will be the veteran um, in uniform when they were serving in the military, and the other side will be just as we are today. And I like that concept because it reminds us that veterans can be teachers, neighbors, grandfathers, you name it. Um, some talk about it, some don't. Um, but these will be able to be changed out more frequently than the permanent exhibition program, which I think offers a nice touch to have these real people being featured. If you can look underneath the banners on the left side, that is a rendering of what we're calling the Keepsake Showcase. And those are um, artifacts that really bring a story to life. And the interesting part about this National Veterans Memorial Museum is we're not a traditional military museum. We're not a traditional history museum, although we're partnering with great museums for object loans. This museum is really founded on the idea that this is about veterans' experiences. And so we're combining all branches, all conflicts, and, and kind of combining it into one museum that can really bring these stories to life. The Ferrants have a permanent home, and we're really excited about that. So um, objects are found when our, our exhibit designers are drawn to a personal experience rather than a historical event, which kind of flips the, excuse me, it flips the museum concept on its head. So we're out scouring the country for artifacts that have a story to them. So yeah, if there are combat boots sitting in a museum, but they don't, aren't tied to this profound story, we're going to move on. We want to hear about the veteran. What was it like for that family member to say goodbye? What was it like for that veteran to serve in combat? What were some other jobs he or she had? So we're diving in deep to those boots. And that's kind of, I think, the message I want you to remember about this museum. These are just some renderings I'll run through quickly about the timeline. And so as you walk through uh, the, part, the first part of the museum experience, you're going to encounter a timeline, which is the basic military history of the United States. It starts from the Revolutionary War on. Um, unlike most museums, though, um, instead of just reading something and kind of moving on gallantly, um, you actually have a lot of moments where these veteran stories will come to life through real objects, real stories. Um, so history will be, will be told in a really interesting way. There'll be a lot of compare and contrast moments. So what did equipment look like from then to now? Um, what was different communication uh, material like back then versus now? How have letters home changed? We know technology has changed, but perhaps the sentiment hasn't. So you get to kind of explore all of that through the conflicts. Uh, these are examples of some of the themes that will be explored in the exhibition program. So after you kind of walk through the timeline, you'll hit these 14 thematic alcoves. And these alcoves are meant to make you think a little bit, and they're meant to um, kind of draw up from veterans' experiences and hone in on some of these universal themes but really brought to life in a very um, personal way. So some themes include uh, you know, taking the oath, um, 
what was it like to leave home uh, over once you're serving? What is it like to uh, serve in various jobs? And what was it like to communicate back home? Um, once you're home, what's it like to, to reunite and re reconnect with your fellow veterans? And how does the legacy of service continue on? How are veterans continuing to serve in their own communities? So lots of themes diving down into deep conversations with media, um, a lot of audio, a lot of film being engaged in these alcoves. Here's another rendering of just what those thematic alcoves look like. This is one I like to share. It's uh, called Transformations. So if you can kind of see through that um, first box there, you'll see the, the three photos. And that's a, a gentleman before he left, a gentleman while he's serving, and a gentleman when he came home. And I think that's a pretty powerful image. You'll continue your, your um, exhibit experience landing in this central media experience. So it's a circular balcony, if you will, that will be um, lit in a very dramatic way with this really large screen hanging down. And it's an eight to 10 minute linear film. And it will kind of bring everything you just saw to life in a very visual, I think, emotional way. And so you'll get to watch that and you'll get to meet uh, in more detail some of the veterans you've seen along the way and some of their family members. You'll walk upstairs to the mezzanine, and we are here in the Remembrance Gallery. And we were reminded, oftentimes, from our Veterans Advisory Committee, we would simply fail if we did not honor the fallen. And we took that to heart and wanted to make sure that was done in multiple ways. And one of the ways is in this room. Um, there's an infinity flag. Taps will be playing. There's quotes from the fallen on the wall. And it's, I'd say, the most somber place in the museum. You'll walk outside to this beautiful rooftop sanctuary. Uh, we wanted to be conscious of, of the space in the museum and also conscious of our neighbor's view eventually. And um, we wanted to put all of the MEP, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing in the lower level and use this rooftop space as something that can actually be enjoyed by the community. And so I mentioned that rooftop processional. We picture parades ending here, ROTC ceremonies, military weddings can hold about a thousand people and it's going to be a really dynamic space. Given Ohio weather, we know, but I think it will be a great use. Um, this is the Memorial Grove I mentioned in that uh, site plan overview I showed you. There's about 41 American elm trees, elm trees planted there now. Um, it's, a, it's a sanctuary. I think it'll be a place of contemplation of what you just saw, um, two and a half acres of parkland, um, a nice place just kind of a respite to figure out, gosh, what, what all did I just take in in that experience? There's a, a beautiful memorial wall with two types of Ohio limestone. There's three waterfall features. There's a reflection pool. So lots of great spaces to kind of take it all in, if you will. Here are some of those aerial photos I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I think it's nice just to see the proximity of where we're at. Um, you can see that memorial grove coming to life. Um, we're about, have a 15 foot easement from that flood wall and so we're kind of creating a city walk, if you will, that's elevated. So when you're back there, you can take a gander at the beautiful downtown views. I think this photo shows in a good way a lot of the concrete arch systems that the architect was fond of. Um, Turner Construction has done a great job of uh, figuring out those architectural feats. Um, at Baker Construction, the concrete subcontractor, has worked on over 10,000 jobs, and this has been their most difficult to date. Um, a lot of rebar, a lot of formwork, a lot of consolidated concrete being pumped from the bottom. So it's a very uh, challenging work, but we're excited to say that we're kind of moving into the interior finishes at this point, and the museum is pretty much dried in. Here's a true bird's eye. You can see that rooftop uh, processional I mentioned that you can actually enter from Broad Street and walk all the way up to the rooftop. It's pretty magical when you take that walk. This is kind of a front-on view. I like this because it really shows the glass curtain wall system, and so you can see how these views will be um, really ma magnificent when you're looking out onto downtown. I think it will also be pretty brilliant when you're looking from downtown to Broad Street. The museum will really light up that skyline from a different point of view. Here's some look at the interior. These were just taken. Um, it's really tall ceilings in this great hall. This is where we are in the, in the main entrance, the lobby, if you will. Uh, to the left, it will be flexible cafeteria space, kind of grab and go. And then to the right is where you start the museum experience. This is a look at where they're at with the rooftop construction. So that shoring is just kind of holding up some foam blocks where they're pouring the concrete to create the, the seating area. 
Um, what you see with the color is actually really profound. It adds this amazing point of view of color because it's kind of a concrete jungle right now. That's an art installation of campaign ribbons from the Revolutionary War on. It is beautiful and I, I can't wait for you all to see it. So here's an actual photo um, that looks like the rendering of the finished product, just so you know we're, we're right on track with where we're supposed to be. And that's how you can get a hold of us if you have questions. I'll close with saying that we have raised um, more than $79 million to date. Um, that pays for the building and the exhibit program, and the continued funds will go into an endowment uh, for the new museum to be operational. CDDC is the project manager, so we're leading the design, construction, the fundraising elements, and the exhibition program. And we will actually turn the keys over to a brand new nonprofit in this city, which is exciting. We are on the hunt for an executive director and hope to announce someone, I'd say by the end of the year, early next year, and then he or she will be responsible for filling out a brand new team. So we'll have a new cultural institution that will be owned by state-of-the-art staff and really accredited folks here. So lots of opportunity. Um, the museum is still kind of an ambiguous opening date of next summer, so we hope to be able to announce a date soon. And we hope you'll all follow along and check out the grand opening festivities when those are announced. So that's all I have today. I know we were running a little late, so I wanted to leave a little time. Thank you. Thank you. OK, happy to take any questions. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> How much confidence do you have that this will be a national destination? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we've done a lot of studies on that and worked with our partners at Experience Columbus. Um, speaking of the national um, piece, um, if you've also read the paper, we were excited to, to see the House uh, of Representatives vote vote on the designation. So we've been working with our Ohio congregation to get national designation passed. Um, it, passed through the House, and so it's on to the Senate now, and that really gives it that validity, right? As we keep fundraising nationally, people want to know, well, what is it? Why are you a national museum? And so if we're able to really share uh, the story that our Congress is behind us, that will really help in those efforts. So it's passed through the House. We're hoping it'll go f smoothly through the Senate as well. Um, you know, we're, we're proud of Columbus's location and what it has to offer. Um, we're within an eight-hour drive of a lot of the country's population, and I think it's been proven with other institutions in Ohio that we can really connect and engage with a lot of the, the rest of the country. So we're excited. What kind of event or banquet space is there? Is it just throughout the museum? Is there a room? What's the capacity yeah. of a rotary <laughs> meeting meet there with 200 lunch <laughs> people? Good uh, question. We get that a lot. We're getting a lot of calls and emails already. Like, I, I want to hold a wedding upstairs, or I want to hold a reception. Um, we'll pass that on, uh, unfortunately, to the new folks who will make those decisions. But I can say there's a lot of flexible meeting space in, in that great hall area I showed you, where the cafe will be. There's also some dedicated meeting rooms. The Franklin County Commissioners wanted to make sure that that the Franklin County veterans groups could meet for free. And so the largest room down there will be about 150. Um, and then obviously the rooftop, given weather for a larger event, can hold about 1,000 people. So I think it varies on the space and what you're looking to do, but there's a lot of great opportunity if you're willing to be creative with the curved walls. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Are there currently opportunities to tour the facility? Yes, there are. Um, I can actually get an email out um, to this group, we host uh, monthly gatherings that are open to the community. Um, and I lead those and I'm happy to have anyone join us and they'll continue on through next year if, if this November date isn't available. So yeah, it's, it's a great thing to see and I feel like the more you can actually touch, see, feel, the more excited you get about it. And this is a really great phase to see it in because we're, like I said, we're working on those interior finishes so you can really see the guts of it right now and how that will all change in the next several months. You look back there. Hi. Once you open, um, do you have any idea what admission is going to be cost? Yeah, so we, we're still working on that. We heard from our Veterans Advisory Committee. Um, that it should be free, and, and we hear that loud and clear. Um, we want to be able to announce that, but obviously that takes a, a lot of um, solidified funds that we don't have yet. And so at this point in time, we can't announce that, um, but it's still a goal we're working toward. I think there's another question. Uh, there were over 15,000 German women and, uh, excuse me, 20,000 German women and 15,000 Australian women that came over after World War II. Is there any 
connection to that story? Not that specific story is ringing a bell, but I'm happy to go back and talk to our exhibit designers. There's so many topics and wonderful themes covered. I, I wouldn't be surprised, but that's not coming off the top of my head right now. I'd be happy to talk to you after. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashley. It was a great focal point for our meeting here today, and we hope that the museum becomes a focal point for all veterans in the U.S. So please join us next week when not only will we be, will be preparing for Thanksgiving, we'll be getting ready for that game with the team up north. Uh, you'll you'll want to be here for a special musical presentation, uh, as well as the Columbus Trust Study will be talking with us about how businesses can create trust with their employees, their customers, and the community. Hope to see you then. Thank you.